Mayor Hayes tonight, would you uh, lead us in the play? For allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you remain standing for a moment, please? Heavenly Father, we have several requests tonight as we bow our heads and pray for your blessings. First, we ask, Lord, that at our last meeting of 2019, you grant us the wisdom to make the right decisions for our city. Second, Lord, we ask tonight that you bless and cherish those affected by the tragedy that occurred Saturday here in Patasco. And we ask, Lord, that you give peace and solace to the family and to our first responders. And lastly, tonight, Lord, we ask that you bestow upon Suzanne Hayes and Michael Powell, our outgoing council persons, all the best intentions and blessings. Their tireless work and commitment over the past few years has left our community in a far better place. And we ask that you bless them and all their future endeavors. And we ask for all of this tonight, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. 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 Kathy, roll, please. Carter. Walter. Howe. Here. Barstow. Here. Hayes. Here. Hicken. Here. Lee. Here. Okay, we have a quorum present. First thing on the agenda tonight. Um, Mr. President, should we do the interviews or let uh, people speak that might be, oh, yep. with a gingerbread guy in the audience, I'm sure he wants to get out of that suit as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, so I that, think that's we'll, fine. I don't want anybody passing yes, out. We'll save our interviews for uh, the second part of Sarah's <laughs> comments. Anybody wish to speak? Uh, and I think we'll start with uh, Sarah. I'm, I'm sure you want to speak and tell sure. us all about the cookie walk. So come on up. I don't know. I'll be anxious to see what the uh, gingerbread man's address is. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> yeah. need name and address, please. All right. My name is Sarah McGuire. Um, address 321 Mulberry Street, Tasco, Ohio. And this is. <laughs> your name, hon? Can you give me your name, please? Just your name. A cookie walk elf. A cookie yeah. walk elf. Okay. Well, that's right. uh, okay. Very good. <laughs> um, I just thought we would come and give a little bit of a wrap up about the event. Um, this year, in particular, was as close to perfect as it could be. Um, we had a lot of things go right this year, um, and I have a lot of things to kind of just highlight. I know it's long, but um, it's part of all these parts of it are what makes the event so special, so I can't not go over the highlights. So um, it, in preparation of the event, it takes well over a thousand hours of volunteer work to plan and coordinate. Um, we were very lucky we had beautiful weather. I don't think it could have been any better. Um, there were over 30,000 cookies there this year. Um, there were 63 cookie walk stops of local businesses, community groups, and churches, and uh, 24 of those um, did extra cookies. They did an extra 200 cookies, so it's pretty awesome. Um, this year we had um, more corporate sponsorships and ad sales in the magazine that you all have, um, and that was awesome because we were able to add to the event um, and afford it, <laughs> so that helped. Um, there were about 500 families that went through. Um, 100 of those were Holly Jolly families, so the, the, all 400 bags sold out. Um, and we, we did the count, and the donations totaled $5,000. So um, Storehouse for Jesus is getting $5,000 um, to help them. Um, and again, that's, that just goes back to the, our Lions Clubs, 100% of the money we take in from the public goes back to the community. <coughs> So we, we've never profited off this event. It's always all gone to local food pantries. Um, and we had a very special guest. Um, Congressman Balderson was there. And that was pretty cool to have Congressman touring your little <coughs> railroad town. That was pretty cool. So 
That was a highlight for sure. Um, we had many characters at the event, like this guy. <coughs> um, it might have felt a little bit like Disney World, just a little bit. We had a lot. We had um, princesses. We had um, the Grinch. We had Olaf. We had um, superheroes there, just and, and Brutus. Any Buckeye fans in the room? Amen. Um, so Brutus was there. Um, there were four volunteer vocal groups, including Liberty Christian, um, our Watkins High School Ensemble, a Siona Valley Chorus, and a local church, Full Gospel Sons. They all came for free and sang um, and added to the Christmas spirit. Um, there was tons of free activities like face painting and free chicken noodle soup and advent calendars and a live nativity. Um, Families all got an ornament to commemorate the memories they made at the end. Uh, we were able to honor Pearl Harbor with, with different, different ways. Um, we did a thank you banner for the American Legion. And of course the parade had 25 floats. Um, and then the decorations in the downtown area, including the street pole banners and the gazebo, all of that. Um, we had everything but a partridge and a pear tree. So, pretty complete Christmas cheer. And I don't want to forget, the, big, the biggest reason why I'm here tonight is to thank the city um, and the role that you have in an event of this magnitude. Um, I'm going to start by saying I hope I don't forget anyone because I didn't mean to if I do. <laughs> but um, thank you to BJ and everyone involved um, in coordinating and permits and pre-event stuff, it's a lot of stuff. Um, I'd like to thank the police department, Keith Brooks. Um, we had four special duty officers. They were very professional. They helped us, um, we had some help closing the road by the police, that was wonderful. Um, Jess Cumbo, she helped um, get the word out on Facebook and she also helped me get trash cans donated by local waste and affordable portables donated the portable bathrooms so and then mayor Mike for for your hours of volunteering and set up and the light tower and everything you do for it so um, I just want to say that it is still really surreal to us in the Lions Club how much this event and the Easter egg hunt have grown over the past seven years um, it's the best compliment to any event planner or service group that year after year we have grown in attendance and collaborative efforts. Um, it's just, you know, we, we can't really say much more about it. It's really humbling. And um, events this size, with this many people, probably about 4,000 people. They, they just can't happen without the support of our local government. So we just thank you for everything. and. Thank you for not thinking I'm crazy when it all started. So that's, that's it. Thank the you. elf will have a gift for you. So that's about it. Well, thank you for this huge event. And it is. It's amazing to turn around and look at uh, a magnitude of what the street fair looks like. And yes, we could, couldn't certainly do it without the street department and BJ and, and Alan and all the guys and the barricades and the police department. It really does take a lot of people to pull it off but yeah. but thank you for you know its inception and, and what it's grown and we keep tweaking it every year we tweaked it a little bit more this year mm -hmm. as it gets bigger and of course we did have excellent weather yes we did so, it helps so thank everybody you everybody was in a good mood so any Brian, comments yes I, I would, <coughs> um sir and brian assuming that you can hear me <laughs> um, yeah i think i think that's brian just <laughs> I, I can sit up here. It I, smells I, like Brian. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think you tried to give me the thumbs up. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, it just, what you guys have done is amazing. We appreciate you guys very, very much. I know what you put into this. And I, I just, I can't thank you enough. Um, I, it's it's amazing. And just being down there and seeing that, it, it, it's, it's an amazing event. And you guys have you, you two especially. I know it's mm -hmm. it takes a lot more than that, but yeah. just thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. Absolutely. We My appreciate honor. it, and hopefully that it continues to yep. grow. So thank you again. Thank you.
I don't know if I want it to grow much more. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. Anything else okay. from the council? All right, thank you. So cough it up, Elf. Let's go. <laughs> Need help? Thank you. Oh wow. It's ornament day Thank at you. the city of Pasco. Y'all better have y'all Christmas trees up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Order. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, gingerbread man. Thank you, Elf. else wish to speak? Yes, sir. Hopefully you have ornaments or candy or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sort of saying I want to be present, unfortunately. I'm not bringing much joy either tonight. Name and address, uh, please. Brian Dispinant, 165 Vine Street mm -hmm. in Pasqua. I just want to bring uh, attention to the water issue we're having. I know we're aware of it. I'm not trying to bring something new up, but it affects our house, so I want to come and have our voice be heard. Uh, my wife and I, we have three kids, two still live in there, and um, we all know what's going on. And I just want to be part of hopefully the solution to help the city. Um, I'm from Pataskala. I love Pataskala. Me and Alan grew up together. Me and Suzanne grew up together. Um, I just want to get some help with getting our yard fixed so we can live a better life because we've thrown away memories uh, from our basement. We've spent $8,700 to date on our basement being dry. Um, we just figured out the main problem is the tile. <laughs> uh, we didn't realize that we had a tile tied into it that was affecting us that much. Um, so we had to have it removed, which is helping our, is, is helping our basement. But unfortunately, our yard is still flooding. Um, a half inch of rain brings two feet of water in our yard. Um, it's bizarre how that it collects and runs down to our yard. We've all seen it. I just want some help. Um, I'm here to help, you know, get my, you know, if we need to do something on my land or my part, we know the problem. We just want to get help getting it fixed. And, um, you know, it's just water is kind of scary. It's one of the things where you can't control it. Sure. And when the guy was in our basement digging up and he hit that line, um, I watched our entire basement fill up in three minutes. I'm not, not basic, a whole floor filled up in three minutes. It's just scary. So we just want some help and that's about it actually. Well, just know that we're working on it, and if you've been talking with Alan, he'll keep you in the loop. So. Sounds great. Thank you, I sir. appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you, guys. Did you, did, you, did you give your address, Mr. Uh, yeah, 165 Vine. Thank you. We actually own 171 Vine, too, so there's two properties that are affected by it right there. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. Name and address, please. Hello, my name is Jean Vax, and my address is 4152 Headley's Mill Road. And uh, good evening, Council. I apologize that I was not here two weeks ago for Parks Advisory Board interviews. A uh, family emergency came up. I wasn't able to make it, but um, I did apply for Parks Advisory Board, and I just wanted to express my interest in serving Pataskala in this way. Uh, I've lived in Pataskala for 18 years. My kids have grown up in our parks. And I retired from the Ohio State Park System um, in 2015, where I was the public information manager. And as part of my duties at the Ohio State Park System, um, I authored the statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, the SCORP, so, uh, and, and also authored um, several uh, strategic plans and annual reports for every year. So um, 
now that I'm retired, I have a little more time on my hands. Uh, I would like to be able to give back to my community, and I feel like that would be a, a, a great thing for me to participate in. I'm very excited about the future plans for Pataskalos Park System, um, and I hope that I could be an asset um, helping those things come to fruition and um, would be very interested in continuing consideration for the Parks Advisory Board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else wish to speak? All right, at this time I will turn the gavel over to President uh, Todd Woodruff Barstow. <laughs> We will be conducting the Planning and Zoning Commission interviews. Take it away, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we have uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. We have uh, six applicants. Is that right? Six. Six applicants. We have two seats uh, that um, that are up um, this time around. So um, a couple of things. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to call folks up in the order that they appear on the uh, on the agenda. I know Mr. Ashcraft's not here. He had a family a business out of town, so he's not he's not here. Um, a couple things. Assume that uh, we have received your um, materials that you turned into us. Um, so we're um, interested in something that maybe we don't know about you that you'd like to tell us, and then we're going to open that up for questions. Um, my intention is to, once we've, con we've concluded the uh, interviews is to um, then ask uh, council for nominations and we'll uh, if we get nominations we'll vote on those nominations uh, one at, you know, one at a time so without uh, further ado mr roaring right, mr roaring is here so sir if you just come up state your name and your address please my name is frank roaring my address is 5810 Columbia Road Southwest. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Mr. Boren, we, we got your, we got your. Um, I'm assuming everyone at council got his um, resume. So, I'll just open it up to uh, council members who uh, have questions for Mr. Boren. Anybody questions? Mr. Hicken, can you tell us a little bit about why you thought uh, about applying for this? Why are you interested in planning and zoning? Um, so, I was actually here a, a few weeks ago for uh, for a zoning meeting. Um, and and to be honest, uh, uh, there was a, a gentleman, uh, top, or John Holman, who owns Clearview Farms, um, came and was talking about one of the properties there. Um, and he brought in the, the topics of, um, it, he was, it, it just gave a really inspiring talk and, and um, talked also about elements of like climate change. And I, so I have really deep concerns about, about our future and I feel like this is a way I, uh, I can contribute towards that um, by being able to kind of help direct that. I also do care deeply about the community um, and want to see it remain rural, but also realize there's a lot of growth going on here and I feel like I have a lot of, uh, a, a very diverse amount of interest that I can uh, help contribute toward that. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone? Going once, going twice. Okay, thank you, sir, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next is uh, Timothy Bush. <coughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Bush, okay, so. Good evening, Timothy Bush, 455 Robin E. Court. Okay, again, uh, thanks Mr. Bush. Um, you can tell us anything you'd like us to know, and then obviously we have any questions, I think. All right, thank you. Um, appreciate you all considering me for the post. I, you know, I'll tell you, uh, most of my experience is in business. Um, I've managed new builds, I've managed existing builds for commercial developments, most of it restaurants, of course, but you know, I've worked in hand-in-hand -hand with the city of Powell and the city of Grove City in opening and operating new business. That's work, you know, working with license, working with the zoning piece of it, making sure that we comply with, uh, especially in Powell, the local zonings there, the zones for the buildings and such. I have a strong working knowledge of it. And, you know, it's something where I feel that from a functional piece, I feel I can come in and contribute, you know, immediately from the ground up. I definitely have the passion around it. I want to see our city be successful. Like the gentleman said previously, you know, there is growth here. I, I'm passionate about that and I want to be a part of it. You know, what my resume doesn't say is just how important it is to me. My kids will both, one's already graduated from the high school here, one will graduate in another eight years. And, you know, I want to make sure that the life that they have in Patasco is a great one. I plan on retiring here. I'm not going anywhere. I, I love the place. 
and you know I, I hope that you all will give me the opportunity I think from a personal perspective I think I can bring some new life into it meaning new fresh ideas and fresh perspective you know I may not have on paper the experience that maybe some of the other candidates may possess but I do have a strong working knowledge of what I'm getting into. I want to be a part of it, and I hope you'll take a chance on me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions uh, for Mr. Bush? You're, you're currently on the Records Commission? That is correct. Yes, sir. Uh, and I have conferred with uh, our law director, and he sees no conflict. If you were to be uh, chosen by counsel, you could also do both. I'm glad so, to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions for uh, Mr. Bush? Uh, see none. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bush. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next is Emily Butler. Okay. Ms. Butler, come on up and uh, give us your name and address, please. Emily Butler, 7357 Summit Road Southwest. Thank you. Um, anything you'd like to tell us we should know? Well, you all should know me from before. Um, but, and you've seen my resume and my background, but um, you know, to echo the previous two, Columbus is growing and that'll inevitably come out here. I grew up in a community where um, the local government leaders said not in my lifetime and they're still alive, but now there are serious traffic problems um, and other utility issues. And I want to be a part of setting a solid foundation for Pataskala to grow on because you know, they said by 2050, there'll be another million, 23 million people around, um, and they'll be here. So I want to be a part of help laying that foundation. I also have the real estate and local government background. So I've seen it. I know things to look at things from the developer side, as well as from the local government side and as a citizen of the community. Um, I also know I have a, a, a unique view of details having worked with different developers for example in the comp plan that um, was circulated earlier this fall um, there were certain areas that were very strongly recommended for development in the future but what people didn't notice was that those are green spaces owned by homeowners associations to so to do anything with those areas would take 100 percent approval of all the owners in the community so as much as and I know that there are other neighborhoods in Pataskala, so how many acres did we account for for good development zones that actually are not able to develop? So I just have a different perspective and um, a new perspective, and I love living in Pataskala, and I want to be here, so I'd like to be a part of helping to make sure that everything goes well in the future. Great, thank you. Anybody have any questions uh, for Ms. Butler? Any questions? No? I have a quick Mr. question. Mr. Hicken. I don't think it, I don't think it would. It would preclude her, but much like uh, the, the previous instance, Ms. Ms. Butler is yeah is uh, on a ad hoc the ad hoc rate board for um, Oak Meadow. Oak Meadow. That'll be done. Oak Meadow. Oh, I'm sorry. Oak Meadow. That's a conflict, right? What is it? Oak Meadow. Yeah, the Oak Meadow Drive, but it's the equalization board. Oh, the equalization board. Oh, you have all that fun. No, uh, once we get done with that. <laughs> <laughs> there's no problem, well, right? There, there's no, I just want to make sure. Yeah, once we finally get that scheduled and done. <laughs> right on. uh, thank, thanks for making that sound exciting. <laughs> Scheduling is exciting for that. I don't know. Well, it is. It's <laughs> proving to be. Okay, any questions for uh, Ms. Butler? Okay. I, I just have a quick comment. You, you, you mentioned about a million, but Morpsey has updated that by 2050. In central Ohio, we'll have 3 million people. So... It's more. definitely what we need to be. Three million more people moving into the central Ohio area by 2050. So, and that was something that was where I learned that number actually was from a Morsi presentation and learning about the different um, yeah. like pipelines that if they're updated at the continuing rate that they're being updated, it'll be a hundred years before they're all updated, and they might have 25 on them. So things like that are something that I. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks, uh, Dustin Epperson. All right, just give us your name and address for the record, please. Dustin Epperson, 2109 West Garden Media Drive. Great, thanks. Tell us anything you'd like us to know. Well, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and to um, hopefully continue my role on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, it is, I've been on for three years now. I um, moved here six years ago, and I can't think of a better way to help contribute to this community. 
uh, some of the stuff that we've worked on um, and some of the passions of mine are helping to reduce some of the residential congestion that is coming into the town. Um, for We probably saw six or seven neighborhoods where it's just cluster home, cluster home, cluster home. Um, in my opinion, that's just a way to cram as many homes and get as much profit for the builders out of the property as possible um, with the <coughs> infrastructure schools and other areas of the city, um, none of their concern. Um, so one of the big pushes I've tried on the commission and succeeded here recently on the, a couple of them is to get them down to what the comprehensive plan was for whatever the R code was for that piece of property. Um, so that is something that I'm proud of and I hope to continue that. Um, and I just look forward to the opportunity to continue to um, serve the city of Patasco, which um, very similar to a city I grew up in, Trenton, Ohio. Um, Trenton, Ohio has grown extensively. Um, and if I went back there, it's probably not a place that I'd stay with my family. So I want to have you know, a part in shaping what this community will be um, to help do it responsibly and to maintain a small town. All right, thank you. Any questions for uh, Mr. Epperson? Is Mr. Epperson currently on any boards or commission? Planning zone. He's on planning zone. Okay. Good. All right, Mr. Everson, thank you very much. Okay, and last but not least, uh, Gary Kendall. Mr. Kendall. I know I saw him earlier. Okay. Again, just to just tell us your name and address, please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Gary Kendall, 11254 Cable Road, Pataskala. I just wanted to add to my resume that things I didn't go into detail on was the fact that I grew up in the Licking uh, <coughs> County in Lima Township. Uh, on Cable Road when there was only five dairy farms. And as I grew up as a kid, that's what I did. I worked for all the farmers on that road. And important thing that I felt all that time is that that atmosphere was any way to retain it to a certain degree. Now, honestly, I know we're going to have growth, but I think it should be done in an orderly and fashion that will not intrude terribly on what our character is, which I think should prevail over everything. Now, I also believe that where, when possible, we should have development around the city center, the old city, Patascala, as a main focus. And as much as possible, try to retain our ag district. At any rate, uh, that was kind of more or less something I just wanted to add to my resume. My interest is there. I know when Randall Ripley retired, I thought, you know, we've lost another voice for the rural area for the Ag District, so I felt compelled to at least come back again and give a shot. Thank you. Anybody? Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Any had questions for Mr. Kendall? Mm, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Appreciate it. Okay, so that is all of our interviews. So uh, at this point, um, for what is called seat number one, are there uh, any uh, nominations? I'll make one. Powell. I'd like to make a motion appointing Dustin Epperson to the Planning and Zoning Commission. A motion for Mr. Epperson to reappoint. Second. Second by Ms. Hayes. Uh, Kathy, when you're ready, roll on Mr. Epperson. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Epperson. You, there he is. You've been reappointed. Okay. For seat number two, are there any uh, nominations for seat number two? Mr. Barstow? Yes. I'd like to make a recommendation to appoint uh, Ms. Emily Butler. Okay. We have a, a motion for Ms. Butler. Second That's that. Second by Mr. Powell. Any discussion? Okay. Kathy, when you're ready, call the roll for Ms. Butler. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Yes. Lee? Yes. Congratulations, Ms. Butler. You're on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Congratulations. Thanks for all the other folks who applied. Uh, don't be discouraged. Please come and apply again. I tell folks I applied several times before I ever got uh, on anything, so um, please do that. Okay, thank you. That's all for that. Mr. Mayor, back to you. Plus, we currently have other openings for other stuff. We do have other openings. Uh, I, I, yep. put this, we, I pushed this out again. Uh, we have... Pete, wants to say something. Okay. Uh, just housekeeping measure, um, Dustin obviously knows Scott, but uh, for Emily, uh, Scott's department will reach out to her and get her all Sworn. situated and everything she needs. Mr. Hicken, did you have, first of all, let's just let Mr. 
Barstow finish what he was speaking. No, Mr. Hickman, go ahead. We will. You were right in the middle of something. All I wanted to say is, as we begin to get more and more people applying for these, I'm eternally grateful to anybody who applies. So we, we've we taken the time to read through these resumes. I know I certainly did. I'll, I should probably should speak for all this, but I think it's true. Uh, you, everybody that turned in a, a full resume and a, a letter of interest. Um, so there wasn't a lot of peppering you with questions. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Um, and there were several in this group that I think, uh, in fact, I think everybody in this group at one point or another, I would have felt quite proud to apply on this commission. Um, so please don't stop applying. It, it sounds like, it sounds cliche, but Sometimes it does take more than one or two, and we're, I personally am very grateful to anybody that applies. Mr. Barstow. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just wanted to say, and I pushed this out again today on, the, on social media, we have uh, two, come January 1st, we have two, two openings on city council. I say again, two, those are at large. So um, folks who have, uh, who are registered voters, been a registered voter for two years, um, in, in anywhere in the city can apply. We have some applicants, but I'm not saying I'm not without any comment on people who've already applied. Um, we like to have a large applicant pool. So if you know somebody, if you're interested, put the application in. Kathy, the application deadline I, I believe is December 30th. It's December 30th at noon. So if you know somebody that's interested or you are interested, come on down. We're going to have open tryouts on January the 8th at <laughs> I think six o'clock. I believe 6:30. It's on, it's on the announcement. Um, come on down and interview, and who knows? Okay, so great. So thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Any other comments? Thanks for applying, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to have the caliber of folks that were that are applying. At 6 p.m. January 8th, 6 p.m. Open tryouts. Got to get an application in by December 30th. All right, introduction, discussion, and approval and consent agenda matter. So moved. Second, second by Mr. Barstow, seconded by Mr. Powell. Dis uh, discussion. And roll. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Consent agenda passes. On the reports, what do you got, Mr. Barstow? Um, I don't have anything. Okay, Mr. Zetz? Nothing. Mr. King? Thank you. Just a couple items. Uh, this evening for exec executive session, we will go upstairs. A uh, reminder to council if it's available, the um, staff holiday lunch, city holiday luncheon is this coming Friday at noon. Feel free to stop in and attend. We are going to hold it at the police station this year. Um, just want to say that it has been a busy year, a good year. Um, I've enjoyed it. And um, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Anything for Mr. King? I did. Um, the email, I know we had a busy week last week. The email about the uh, the poll at Mill and Maine, where are we with that? AEP is looking in to see what that's going to take to remove. That carries three phase electric that covers the a large portion of the southeast area from there. Okay. Um, they're going to see what it takes. Um, you know, I'm hot a little bit that it would be tough to do. I asked them if it's possible to remove that and just dip that under the road. They're taking a look at that and going to provide a price for that. And, and just, just to back that up, I, I hate that I brought it to the attention so late, but it just ha so happened that, for those that weren't on the email, just so happened that as I drove by and other people drove by and saw the wire blowing up at the base of the pole, I'd assume the whole project that that pole was gone because it was between the railroad tracks and mill was the project scope from my understanding so I just assumed it was always gone <clears throat> so um, I, I would like to see it gone I realize if the, if the numbers outrageous that's something but and I'm just speaking for myself but um, if, if at all possible it would be really nice to have that gone so that the project is what we sold it as Certainly, say from a cost standpoint, once we get that, uh, keep in mind we do have the State Route 310 TIF that is dedicated to make improvements along 310, which is how we're funding the current project to underground electric. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anything? Yes, ma'am. I do. Um, I had a concern from 
Mrs. Ms. Sasby at Ivory Barn, she was just concerned that the transformer in her front yard, the green one, she just bought that property. There's like a sliver of property between the big barn and the beauty shop. And so she just closed on a piece of property and she just wants to know why the green transformer is there. And I don't know whether or not that was something that was signed off before she purchased the small property, but if we could reach out to her. Certainly will. That's on the property she purchased that would have been signed off prior to her. Prior purchase. to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, she bought that little piece. She bought the piece okay. between the beauty shop, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the transformer is right on the sidewalk. So it's on the frontage. So it's hard for her to do anything with this new property that she just built, which is a uh, fair that she and she's just you know, just when you buy a piece of property and you can't do anything with it, it's frustrating, I'm sure. Yeah, that would have that easement or that would have been signed off prior to her purchasing okay. the property, which would have probably been last year earlier this year when those were all wrapping up so is there some way we can reach out to her is there Absolutely. i don't know whether or not that's if it, is it too late is it stuck there now is can it be moved i'll check that's something that we need maybe yeah. we can i can reach out or if you could yep thank you mr hicken my uh, my question is in the exact same thing because um i did speak with her this week with this weekend and I, I didn't quite have the information. I appreciate you saying it now, BJ. The owner of that strip of property signed off on that easement um, before she sold it to her? Because correct. I, I don't know she... to purchase that piece of property. I mean, is that, is, do you know that? Did AAP tell you that or? I'm assuming that she just recently purchased that property. I think that part's correct. And the easements were wrapped up a while ago. Well okay. before this, so I, yes, if that if, person. If you remember, off, um, at one point, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, at, at one point, uh, in meeting with them, she signed an easement. Her concern was that the easement that she signed was truly for only the buried line, right? And that she does not recall signing any easement for a transformer upstairs, or, or I'm sorry, a transformer out front. In the front yard. Um, by the same token, and this, this this is neither here nor there, it should be taken, but I, I know from talking to her about attempting to purchase that property that it was a long and arduous struggle, and and I I think she she's got she's of the impression that the person that owned that piece of property would never have signed an easement to allow a transformer. So Transformer could not be on that piece of property, which is a private piece of property, without somebody signing off an easement. And who's the magic keeper of the easements? AEP. Okay. That's good, good enough. Mr. Lee? I think my question's already answered, but because um, when the three of us met with her down there, it, we, we did discuss the buried line, but at that point she had not purchased that piece of property. That's so I just want to, I, I think I'm on the same page now. Is that, is that all accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I think that's correct. And I, that's and, correct. And, and I think I, I told Mr. Kane this, but I'll tell counsel this as well. I think what she has at least said to me in passing is that she doesn't mind if the transformer moves back by, back deeper into her property because her plans for her building are to go out there in some form of an expansion. I don't know if the building's going to expand. I don't know if it's going to be a patio, but she, they had plans in the works, and now that transformer is sitting smack right dab in the way she is. Right on the frontage. Yeah. Right. So, and just a little more, as so everybody knows. Okay. Anything else for Mr. King? Mr. Nicholson. I have nothing. Anything for Jamie? You look great. Thank you. And technically, he does look. You great. look. You look great. <laughs> so, oh. No more pirate. No more pirate. Chris. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight, there's a resolution uh, on the agenda. Um, you may recall that the, con the wastewater plant upgrade, construction, admin, bidding, and observation. Uh, there, an RFP was put out for that. We received two submittals, um, one from MS Consultants for $111,600, the other from Holland Associates for $97,020. Uh, so with their uh, history, track record, and the lower bid, uh, the resolution is to accept the, the um, 
proposal submitted by Hall and Associates. Uh, we have, in anticipation of the wastewater plant uh, upgrade in the spring, we're starting to drain our lagoon system that we will use uh, while we're by bypassing the wastewater plant itself. Uh, we reached out to the EPA, let them know that that's our plan. They have no issues with that, so that process will slowly begin uh, during the winter months. It's uh, just easier for us to do uh, so that when the spring comes around, we'll have enough room in our lagoons to run the wastewater through that system while the normal um, treatment train is being upgraded. Uh, we did have an, another leak, uh, 279 John Reese Parkway had a hole develop in the copper service line. We replaced it with plastic. Uh, we also, over the weekend, had a saddle fail in Beachwood Trails. Uh, it has not failed all the way, it's leaking. Uh, customer still has pressure, no property damage, so to keep that date from being an emergency, we're putting that off till Thursday. Um, that's when the, that repair is scheduled, but uh, another leak uh, popped up on it. So um, I do want to say that uh, Trent Howe, John Burr, and Connor Johnson have all been going every Monday for the last 16 weeks to the Class 1 uh, water treatment course put on by ACO. They all finished that up last Monday. Um, all of them passed the course, passed their exams with a score between 89 and 92. So the only thing they have left to do is take the actual EPA exam for the license. Uh, Trent has enough time and service that once he passes the exam, he'll have his license. John and Connor have to wait until they get 12 months service, which will take 24 months to do because half of their time is spent in sewer half of it is spent in water, so, uh, but they are well on their way. Um, John and Connor have come into this industry, they've got less than a year experience each, and they're charging ahead with um, passing the course that talks about water chemistry and hydraulics and um, um, stuff that you would not be familiar with if you didn't come into the industry, so I'm pretty proud of what, of what they've been doing um, with that. The only other thing I want to say is outside of my report, uh, there is a property 3993 Hazelton Etna Road. It is up north on 310. It's immediately north of Scotland Ridge. Uh, the gentleman there's well pump is stuck in the casing. Uh, they tried pulling it out. Everything started to break. He has a small amount of water, but not very much. Uh, we have a water main on the west side of the road that he could tie on to. However, he is not a, in the city of Potasco service area. He belongs to the district. Uh, he reached out to them. They are going through the process of discussing at their next board meeting uh, whether or not they will uh, waive the right to provide water for him to us so that he can, can get water. They have no pipes in the area, so he's in their service area, but there's nothing for him to tie on to. So I wanted to let council know that that was going on because when, if uh, the board does decide to give the city the rights to serve this property, this gentleman is ready to go. He's got his capacity be in hand. He has a contractor lined up. Um, so if that, uh, if that property is given to the city, I would anticipate that this, being, this is done before we have our next meeting on uh, January 6th. So I want to take time to throw it out there. It does all depend on the district. Without uh, written permission from the district to service this property, there's absolutely nothing we can do. Um, so, so I just wanted to give council a heads up on that. Outside of that, I have nothing else. I'd be happy to answer any questions. So if the board were to say okay, that he would just pay a tax fee and uh, then he would be responsible for all construction to take it under the road and hook up? Yes, it's a capacity fee. He would pay that and then he would have a contractor who's already registered with us uh, come out, tap the water main. <coughs> it would bore under 310, set a meter pit, and then run the rest of the water line up to his house. Thank you. So he's on the opposite side from the lawn? Yes, sir. Anything for Chris? All right, thank you, Chris. Alan? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first thing I want to mention is uh, Jefferson Park Drive. We were talking about accepting that. Uh, so we, uh, Scott and I have looked into that. Uh, they, the, the plat that's there is not really adequate. There was an initial plat, and then there was a replat uh, that didn't have signatures on it. So we do believe they need to replat that. Uh, aside from that, uh, we'd want to get the stormwater maintenance agreement from them. But if, uh, if they can get those two things taken care of, I think we, we should be good to, uh, to accept Jefferson Park Drive. I think those are the only questions the council had that were outstanding on that. Uh, second, uh, Oak Meadow Drive, uh, council had asked for a letter to be sent out to them. Uh, wrapping that up should be out in the next couple of days. Uh, the contractor is still out there. Well, of course, not with the snow on the ground, but they have left. <coughs> a couple things they're trying to wrap up now. They'll definitely be back. They know they need to come back in the spring to reseed and do some regrading and such. 
uh, when we have better weather out there. Uh, two resolutions offered tonight. One is for uh, Broadmoor Commons Phase 3. They have met all of their requirements and it is ready for acceptance. Uh, so I recommend approval of that. Uh, and then resolution uh, 086, uh, this is for the Town Street Trunk Sewer. Uh, this is the long-term solution to the Vine Street issue. Uh, and of course, we'll be talking about short-term later. Um, have to answer any questions? Other than landscaping, I mean, mailboxes, everything on Oak Meadow, everything's back to where it, it should be except for obviously landscaping. Uh, there's some driveways that uh, were not constructed as per plan and aren't draining properly, so there's some uh, remedial work on some driveways that needs to be done uh, and some final adjustments to grade of some catch basins to match what the final grading will be. I believe that's about it. Okay. Will that, I mean, it's probably too late now, but striping, anything on that road, will that get striped at all? Uh, stop bars. Stop bar. It's st uh, there's <coughs> two traffic lights or two stop signs. Isn't there? Two stop signs and then the traffic lights. And, and I think there's a crosswalk in there as well. Right by uh, <coughs> General or something. Yes. Like yeah. Yes. Very good. Any questions? For yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. Um, I spoke with um, Scott and Alan about this. PJ, you were on Friday, so you may not be up to speed. Um, uh, the mayor and I were fortunate enough to be invited and, and attend a homeowners association on Saturday, their annual meeting, um, Sugar Mill. Um, very, very uh, strong homeowners association, very, very good people. Um, <clears throat> we're fortunate to be able to go to that. Anyway, we, we addressed a, a, a lot of issues. They're, they're kind enough to send us a list prior to, so we, we know what we're kind of walking into. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things, and again, I spoke with you guys about it, is they have two... Um, homes that were there before the development that don't have sidewalks. Um, it's not a lot of sidewalk, but it's it, apparently one of the homes didn't want it and the other one did does want it now. It's still in the right of way, so we, we can do it. Um, after the first of the year, uh, like Mel's not here for the street committee, and who knows how the street committee you know is going to shake out. But it, could we get, is there money in the, in the fee in lieu of to address, let, let me back up a minute. Brian Holmes was supposed to put these in, I believe. Mm, no? No, because originally the lots were platted as part of the subdivision, then there was a replat. Those two lots were taken out, and there shows no sidewalk on the plans for either. But lot, so that's why none was, no But I thought we negotiated in. in the approval of phase two to put them in. There was the potential, and Alan and I had discussed it about upon acceptance to have that be one of the punch list items. But that hasn't been approved, just so I understand. Okay. Yeah, right. So let's just assume Ryan Holmes is not going to do that. It's been a long time. Could you guys take through the street committee and we research, you know, and, and bring that back to council and get them their sidewalks? It's a, it's a safety <coughs> concern for them, and, you know, they, it doesn't look good. Um, but safety being the biggest reason, I, I know we talked. Well, we're not thinking a lot of money, um, but <clears throat> they've been asking for a long time, and we've been kind of um, not getting not getting the answers or not knowing the answers. So and the fee and loot would be a great place to take that from. I know I'm pretty sure we depleted that on Oak Meadow. I don't know if anything additional has been added to it, but uh, we can work with Jamie to see what we've got in there and go from there. And that's replenished every time. What happens? Every time that a development comes in, um, they're required to install sidewalks, but if it's an area where it doesn't make sense, if there's no other sidewalks, they have the option to pay a fee in lieu of. That's the only, that's the only reason, that's the only time we get Correct. extra money. Okay. And, and I, I want to make it perfectly clear, I'm not trying to speak on behalf of the streets committee, because that's the right process is to go through the committee, but with the, <coughs> being the new year and <coughs> one person, sorry, who will be here next year, will be on the street committee. Mike, too. If, He's on it. Oh, I thought it was Tim. Or Andy, no. Mel, and you. I thought that's no, it's Mike and Mel and I. Mike's out too. Anyway, I just like to not get lost in the mix so we can we can get them an answer. So. Anything else for Alan? <clears throat> thank you, sir. And thank you again for all the work on the cookie walk. Absolutely. That was huge. Pass that on. Scott Fulton.
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things I'd like to highlight. Scenic View Estates did submit their amendment for the preliminary development plan. That was on December 10th. So they will appear before Planning and Zoning Commission on January 2nd. Following a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission, it'll come to City Council probably the second meeting in January because um, the rezoning request was tabled um, in the summer, so they'll have to go and do a third reading and a fourth reading on that. So that is still in the process. So uh, we just need to keep ordinance 2019-4341 tabled for just a little bit longer. Also, ordinance 2020-4358, this is a code amendment request for the distressed properties ordinance. That went through and received a recommendation of approval uh, early this month from the Planning and Zoning Commission. That will be scheduled for a public hearing before Council on February 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Aside from that, they have to answer any questions. Anything for Scott? Well, I have a full point of order kind of question. Will a tabled ordinance uh, jump, a, jump the year? Yes. Thank you. Resol uh, resolutions and um, motions do not, but ordinance do. Turn on that. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Stole your thunder. We stole Kathy's thunder. We were both shaking our heads. It's a lot of thunder. A lot of thunder. <laughs> thunder. Anything else for Scott? Thank you, sir. Hmm? How's that new truck working out for Steve? He loves it. Yep. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> 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 Lanier. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll highlight two things. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is the Liberty Park project for the 2018 Nature Works awarding. Um, we're going out to bid next month, January 30th. Um, so we'll start that process to have another addition to a park. Um, second thing I'd like to highlight, um, being a member of the National Parks and Recreation Association, um, there are a lot of grant opportunities that are available to members. Um, I applied for one to add to our health and wellness initiative that we started this past year, the movement, um, in partnership with the YMCA, hoping we can continue to solidify that partnership. Uh, we received another grant, um, and that grant was to um, have two to three instructors paid for. Um, to offer a 12-week active living everyday program. Um, this program will be given twice in 2020, um, and there was really nothing for me to do um, on our end. So within the YMCA's partnership and with their obligations, they'll provide two instructors, and those classes will be held at parks and also within their facility. Um, and I think it's going to be a great addition to the community, and not only for our community, I believe LCAP will be able to take advantage of that since they have a partnership within their organization. So um, kudos to them, but I'm hoping that we can continue to offer health and wellness opportunities to the community. Aside from that, I'm open to any questions. Anything for Lanier? All right, thank you, sir. Chief Brooks? Thank you, Mayor. I just like to thank uh, Tom Lee and his family, uh, along with the Depot Street um, Hopkins House for their uh, charity event for the Shop to Cop, it was a huge help. I'd also like to uh, just say that uh, we're gonna miss um, Mrs. Hayes and, and Mr. Powell, not only as a employee, but as a resident, I appreciate everything you guys have done. That's all I have, thank you. Shop with a cop. Uh, it was uh, another great year. <laughs> We're in like year 10 or 11, and it's a, it, it was a very successful event. There were 28 kids, and they uh, they all had a great great time. I always like watching the internet blow up because they're wondering where all the cop cars are going, and then everybody in the <laughs> Target store thinks there's something going on, and then when they realize what's going on, they ended up handing us money hand over fist for the kids, and uh, I think the total was uh, five or six thousand again. So 28 kids. Buying Christmas gifts for their family and themselves, uh, and then of course the uh, dinner at Church on the Rock. And, uh, it's amazing what you can stuff into three hours. But uh, we get on a bus, go to Target, get on a bus, go to the church, feed them, and their parents pick them up. So uh, luckily, because by that time they're full of all kinds of sugar. That's amazing. Yeah. I cannot even get out of Target in three hours. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a time it's event. True. That's for sure. Right. Where, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mayor, 
Yes. Um, I'd just like to tell, uh, say to the chief, amazing job with, with the incident. Um, I, it's, it's never easy. I, I would also say, and I've talked to Chief Trinish, but to the fire department as well, um, this uh, it's a horrible, tragic event, but you guys done a, a phenomenal job. And uh, I know that when you have young kids like that, it's a game changer. Everything changes as hard as it always is being in that line of work. But I uh, hope your guys are good. I just echo those, uh, those comments. Uh, that's, that's not easy. Um, exactly, I, I saw a lot of, I didn't go to uh, the shop with the cop, but I saw a lot of the Facebook video, and I'm not sure who had more fun, the kids or the cops. Um, or the mayor. Yeah. Yeah, so that's always a good sign. It looked like everybody had a good time, but uh, the officers said they really, uh, really enjoyed themselves too, which is, which is good, so yeah, it's awesome. They always do. Yeah. We always do. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, I would echo Tommy's comments uh, as a representative of the, of the fire department. Um, it's always nice to see the two sides working together, even, even under uh, circumstances. I think that was the case. My thanks to the mayor who helped coordinate uh, on the police side with, with that and that. On a separate note, totally separate note, um, in my neighborhood, we had a couple of porch robberies, stolen cars, and break, well, maybe a break-in is too strong a word, but so with the help of the chief, I confirmed that, and he was nice. Thank you for letting me put something out on social media. Got lots of inquiries. Lots of people said we haven't, because some of it I heard from different pieces of Facebook or by word of mouth, and you guys obviously knew about some of it too. So telling everybody that there was several incidents, hopefully, uh, lets everybody know that lock your cars, lock your houses, be smart, see something, say something. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Committee chair reports. I think we have one tonight. We do, and I'll make it as quick as possible. Uh, we had a building to ground meeting tonight, and uh, we had two things on the agenda. We discussed the whole town hall sign. Um, that I believe was on everybody's desk. We also discussed the air conditioning project. Um, I'll start with the air conditioning project um, because it's, there's not a whole lot to report other than um, the contractor we had um, backed out and uh, we're, we're, BJ's regrouping, and um, he's already been in contact with another uh, contractor, and things are moving pretty well. Yes. Um, so he will keep us posted on that, uh, but there's not a whole lot to report there. Um, on the sign, did everybody get to look at the sign? Um, the only changes that we made um, was we made the Pataskala logo bigger, and we asked that they run electric up the two poles in case we ever did want to put a light on the two poles. Um, we did pass that, uh, made a motion to uh, recommend to council, and uh, I'll be making a motion later on that. And uh, if there's any questions on it, you ask me now or ask me then. Any other committee chair reports? All right, unfinished business. Uh, ordinance 2019-4357 for a second reading. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Barsco, seconded by Mr. Powell. Kathy, when you're ready, second reading, please. Ordinance 2019-4357. This is the second reading and ordinance to amend the city of Patasqua schedule of municipal fees and thereby add section D Parks and Recreation. Discussion? On well, a new business, Resolution 2019-083, a resolution authorizing the city administrator to execute a contract with the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners for reimbursement of legal counsel for indigent defendants in 2020. So moved. Moved by Mr. Barstow. Second. Seconded by Mr. Powell. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. It just, um, although I do accept appointments from the court system here in Lincoln County, I don't accept any from uh, involved in the city of task as the chief knows because I'm constantly texting him asking him if uh, so and so was investigated by the police department he's always very nice to get back to me as quickly as he can so I don't uh, have that problem no conflict no conflict of interest there no sir very good any other input Kathy when you're ready please Haynes yes Nickham yes Lee yes Walter excuse me Powell yes Barstow yes uh, resolution passes. Resolution 2019-084. Resolution authorizing and directing the city administrator to execute a contract with Hall and Associates, Inc. 
for the bidding, construction and administration, and construction observation of the water reclamation facility upgrade project. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Barstow, seconded by Mr. Hicken. Discussion and roll. Hicken? Yes. <coughs> Lee? Yes. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? <coughs> yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-085. A resolution to accept and confirm infrastructure improvements for the Broadmoor Commons Phase 3 development for public maintenance and operation by the City of Pataskala. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Barstow, seconded by Mr. Powell. Discussion? So, Phase 3, is that the last phase? No. It's a, okay, so... Uh, there's at least seven phases. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, approximately. Seven, seven phases. Mm -hmm. Six, four and six just went through Planning Commission, so seven potentially at eight. So the infrastructure for the whole thing has not been put in. Correct. They'll just do it in phases. Correct. Okay. There's not empty lots and empty roads running around and stuff. Uh, as we accept them, of course, they're empty. They're, they're, they're building them out as they as they put the new ones in. Yes. We, just, we wouldn't do any work on them or maintain them or plow them if there's no houses on them. Uh, once we accept them, we do plow them. Okay. So. Makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? Kathy, when you're ready. Lee? Yes. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-086, a resolution authorizing and directing the city administrator to execute a contract with American Structure Point, Inc. to perform engineering design services for the Town Street Trunk Sewer Project. So moved. Second by Mr. Barstow, seconded by Mr. Powell. Discussion? Yes, sir. I just got a quick question on, do we have a dollar amount for, for the engineering? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's in a legislative report. Um, I have it is. $27,950. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. And $0.22. Cents. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, you may not be able to answer this, um, but since last meeting, do we have, are we still in the same time frame looking at probably June-ish? To get started, probably a uh, okay. survey. We got to have snow on the ground. We got to get that done. Uh, design will take a month, two months. Bidding. Uh, presumably, and then uh, contract documents, and then start construction. I just didn't know if that changed at all. I'll probably ask that <coughs> quite a bit. So like late spring, early summer is what I'm anticipating. Just to start. Correct. And, and, and probably and two to three, probably two month project, maybe three. Okay. Finalize. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. And I assume that'll be like forefront of the street committee starting in January. Or just keeping that timeline going, keeping. Uh, we'll certainly keep it on the uh, agenda. agenda. I appreciate that. <coughs> Kathy, when you're ready. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Uh, resolution passes. Um, on this motion, you changed the word <coughs> lease to what, sir? Um, the motion should be to execute not a lease agreement, but a use agreement. Use agreement, okay. Thank you. Well, I, know, I remember us discussing it in leadership, and, and when Kathy prints up my hard copy, it did not, you know, that's just an older copy, so I just wanted to make sure and catch that. Okay, motions. Uh, motion authorizing and directing the city administrator to execute, execute a use agreement with the historic Pataskala Town Hall, Inc. for the Sterling Theater through December 31st, 2021. So moved. Moved by Mr. Barstow. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lee. Discussion? And roll. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Powell? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Uh, we're going to go on to additional citizens' comments because Mr. we're going to be. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, go ahead. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to um, approve the uh, signage for Old Town Hall with the two changes um, that we documented in uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee. Got a motion on the floor. Second. Seconded by Mr. Powell. Discussion? And roll. Powell? 
Yes. Barstow? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. And uh, I have one motion tonight. Um, after much deliberation, uh, discussion, and um, consultation, uh, including our park, I, I call you, I'm calling, I call you a park director, so you, you, you do the work of the park director. So um, I'm going to make a motion tonight to uh, uh, put Cynthia Friel and Derek Lee back onto the um, Park Board Advisory, Parks and Recs Advisory Committee. Okay. Need a second? Need a second on that? Yes, I need a second on the motion. Okay, second. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Lee. Discussion? Oh. I believe we have to have a motion Wait, how can you to confirm. No, I can't make the motion. I okay. Okay. It's, 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 I'm looking for a motion to put uh, Cynthia Friel and Derek Lee back on, on the Parks Advisory Board. Confirm. Can somebody do that for me? To confirm. It's, actually con it's a to motion confirm. to confirm your appointment of those yes. two. Okay. So moved. Keep going, Doctor. Uh, so move across your teeth. Sorry, Kathy. Are you seconding that? Yes, or you, sir. You're, you're doing the motion. Okay. Doing the motion. Okay. I'm second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Discussion. And roll. Barstow. No. Hayes. Yes. Hicken. Yes. Lee. Yes. Powell? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, on to, uh, so we'll be going up to an executive session, so we're going to move to citizens' comments now, because once we go upstairs, that's how that's the order. Yeah, I'm just explaining to the audience that uh, we'll be upstairs, and uh, so we'll move to citizens' comments. You have three minutes to speak on any topic that's been discussed here tonight. Yes, sir, your name and address. Yes, uh, Trent Thorson, 3614 Headley's Mill Road. Um, I appreciate, I wanted to say, you know, I appreciate the work that's being done on this Vine Street water issue. It's a, it's a unfortunate situation, the whole thing is. It, uh, it's something that really shouldn't have happened, but I wanted to thank you all for an Alan and BJ and everybody for working on this. Um, it's a it's a it's really difficult in the sense that I, I know the time frames here, uh, you know, June, July, maybe three months or something like that. Are as I stated when I spoke I don't know, couple, last week or a couple weeks ago or a month ago, uh, our situation's immediate, and it's a it, every time it rains, <laughs> we're we all of us are having to be over there, you know, monitoring. As we said, we have a couple. Of we have a couple of apartment buildings, so we have eight families there. And if there's any way to alleviate this situation as a short-term band-aid to fix this thing in the short term, uh, would be greatly appreciated by everybody. And anyway, that's all I'm going to say. I appreciate your time, and everybody have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Mr. Barstow, what do you got for me? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we go into executive session pursuant to revised code uh, section 121.22G3 to conference with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of imminent court action. Invited into the executive session are B.J. King, City Administrator, Brian Zatz, Law Director, Alan Haynes, Director of Public Services, and Chris Schrock, Utility Director. I got a motion. Got a seconded by Mr. Hickens. Discussion and roll. Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? Yes. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Okay, executive session at 809 upstairs, please. Seconded by Mr. Lee. Discussion and roll. Wait. 
Who are we missing? Tim. Tim. Okay. So we do not have a. No, no. We don't have no. a board right now. He's coming. <coughs> Just, just that. <laughs> carry on, carry on. Just say yes. I'm going to miss Suzanne. Oh, she gave me her seat to cushion, too. Nice. <laughs> oh, man, I was going to scarf that. You want it? No. Need a motion to come out of executive session. Move. Moved by Mr. Barstow. Second. Uh, it's already been seconded by Mr. Lee. Uh, Kathy, are you ready? Yes. Hickam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Powell? Yes. Barstow? Yes. And is Mrs. Hayes left? Yes. yes. Out of executive what? session at 912. Um, we'll go round and round, and we'll start with Ms. Mr. Hicken. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple things. Thanks to Sarah for all the work that she does on the Pick the Block. Uh, and also the Lions Club. Um, it was um, a wonderful time out there. Congratulations to Mr. Epperson and Ms. Butler. And special thanks to departing council members Powell and Hayes. It's been an extreme pleasure to work with both of them. Um, be eternally grateful for support that they gave me, support that they gave the city. I'm sure that we'll all have something to say, but just a heartfelt thanks from me. And it's been wonderful to work with both of them. Thank you. And that's it for me. Powell? I move we, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, uh, I've enjoyed being on city council. It's been an honor to, to serve with you guys. Uh, I can't, I can't tell you the many nights I've sat up here and felt inadequate as a council person, which is all the knowledge you guys have and the, and the way you guys can look at, uh, at different issues. I, you know, I, there's many times I'll look at stuff and be like, I don't really have anything to add and just hear the stuff that comes up. I'm like, man, like I'm doing something wrong. But uh, I, like I said, I've enjoyed serving with you guys and I have uh, full faith now, just you know, being a resident in my city council and I have faith in, in your appointments come, come January. So, um, and then to the two directors that we still have here, uh, great job. I, you know, you guys do a, I mean, the stuff you deal with, I mean, you deal with crap, literally, <laughs> on a daily basis. And then Alan deals with the, with the unholy trinity of drainage problems, snow plowing, and uh, road projects. And somehow you handle it. I don't know how you do, but I cannot do it. Um, Kathy, all the work you do, your, just your, your knowledge of, Everything that's ever gone on in the city is impressive. <laughs> uh, BJ, you've been a, a wealth of knowledge on everything. I've enjoyed, you know, having you at my at my disposal to to learn about you know things going on in the city. I really appreciated that. And Mayor, you've been one of my biggest uh, uh, encouragers from from the beginning, and uh, I cannot thank you enough for that. So that's all I have, Mr. Barstow. I'll thank you, Mr. Mayor. Why? And echo Mr. Pickard's comments. It has been a pleasure to have both Mr. Powell and Ms. Hayes on council. I think the thing that I, I'm going to miss the most um, from both of them is their the fact that they are longtime residents of the city and have that unique uh, perspective on what Patascala was and what Patascala is and what Patascala can be. And I, I'm going to miss that. Um, I think that that's really important. So um, I, I'm sure that both of them will uh, offer, uh, and they're welcome to offer uh, ideas and criticism and things like that. Uh, so please, uh, please stay in touch. Don't be a stranger. And if you ever feel the urge to uh, serve again uh, on the city, then you know, just to make sure you fill out an application, make sure it's timely. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss the deadline. Um, and um, you know we would love to you know, get, get you back and get you involved again uh, at uh, at some uh, at some point. I do have a question for Chris though. How's uh, how's the product? Product's well, better than been all year. Good. Okay. So <laughs> forgot to ask that. Forgot to ask that's my last time. This I'll last give it up for you tours. Sure. Anybody wants to come out? Uh, you, you got, if you haven't been, you got to go. <laughs> um, that, that's all I have for you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Especially if you're draining the swamp. Oh wait, you said draining the lagoons. Yeah, lagoons. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mr. Lee. Um, I, I just will end by saying thank you to Mike. And it's been an honor to serve with you. And Suzanne already already mentioned that, but uh, I wish you guys the best and all that you do. And don't be strangers. And feel free to reach out and say your piece if you need it. And, uh, other than that, I'll motion to adjourn. Second. And a motion seconded by Mr. Barstow. Discussion. And Merry Christmas. Yes, Go ahead, Kat. Lee? Yes. Carl? Yes. Barstow? Yes. Taken? Yes. Me adjourned. Oh. Mike, it was a pleasure working with you. Absolutely. Amazing. You I appreciate your help. Uh, you and your family's help this past fall. It was awesome. And like I say, you come, come back. I will. Oh, well, you know, let us know. but you got to get up and down the whole department. Yeah. Well, <laughs>